Welcome back to Nitro World Games 2018. Coming to you from the Utah Motorsports Campus. Definitely in the beautiful state of Utah. We have had a lot go on here at Nitro World Games today. We started things off with freestyle motocross, then we went to Nitro Rallycross, and we are gonna end off this day with the incredible quarter pipe event that's about to happen here behind us. I'm Todd Richards, I'm here with Lorette Nickel, who's gonna be taking care of our social media aspect of this entire event. And I gotta tell you, did they save the best for last? I don't, I don't know. know. The scariest for last, for sure. Now, this thing is absolutely insane. It's 32 feet in height, and these guys are going to be launching themselves about 50, 60 feet in the air, probably even higher. They get off that takeoff on the right side. They're dipping that shoulder down, putting the head down toward the pavement. And basically, no judging, no tricks out here. It's about how, how, how high you can send yourself. Okay, so we're going to start it off with Jared McNeil out of Australia. Coming off of a big uh, performance out there at X Games Minneapolis back in July. He got a step-up gold and a best whip gold. However, he did not find pay dirt in quarter pipe high air out there. He had to settle for fifth. So he's hungry. He's looking for redemption, redemption here at the Nitro World Games. This discipline is so new. Every ramp is different. Jared has one of these in his backyard, which is different than the one at X, which is different than the one here. So to, to kind of warp your, your mind into what the ramp is, is very difficult to do. And to get comfortable on it is almost impossible. Well, that comfortable, that's that, <laughs> that, that word is the elephant in the room. That thing is scary. It's daunting. And it's it's physical, yes, but there's also quite a mindset that goes in to riding something of this size. And one thing we haven't talked about yet, the wind is a factor here. We talked about it earlier in Best Trick. It's definitely just as, if not a little bit windier right now than what we saw earlier in Best Trick. You saw the flags moving around at the top of the show, but here we go with the first attempt for Jared McNeil. Jared, Jerry. Yes. So you'll see two different styles as we go through this out here today. You'll see some of these guys carve or traverse. When they take off from the lip, they'll travel some real estate across the width of the ramp. Whereas when we get down to the bottom of the field, other guys like Axel Hodges, they'll take more of a straight up and down approach, go straight up, get the apex of their jump, and then just dip that shoulder and rotate back into the landing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of approaches, like you said, but what's most important is watch their heads. They are trying to find a point on that ramp where they do not take their eyes off of you. You can kind of see the, that carpeting is riveted in there, and where they've been landing a little more seems to be where they're looking. But he's not looking up, he's not looking down, he's looking exactly where that front tire needs to be placed so it doesn't just buck him over the handlebars. Uh, it's terrifying. That's terrifying, Jimmy. Crazy, too, the knuckle of that landing right there. You see how it's not quite divert there. It's recessed back just a little bit. Saw some of those guys in practice the other day just kind of bouncing into that with both tires as we take a look at our next rider here. This is Cole Denny out of San Diego. Yeah. Rocking the denim sleeveless vest with the motorhead patch on listen, the back. This listen. guy's a blue collar rider right here. Holds down a full time job. <laughs> This is where freestyle motocross needs to go. They need to shake the racing off of it and go true freestyle mentality. This man is all about it. And the fashion is an extension of the mindset, is the extension of the bravery, is the extension of the height, Jimmy. And he looked a little tentative on this thing on Friday afternoon when I was watching practice. And he actually had a crash and slid out a little bit. But he got more comfortable on this thing as the weekend went by. And that was a great first attempt for him right there. Let me tell you the Cole Denny story. He rode Lay freestyle on motocross. He broke his back. He decided, oh, BMX is way easier. Easier. And then he starts riding off his roof, starts an Instagram account, gets 20,000 followers in a year, and an invite to the Nitro World Games. Welcome back to Motorcycles, Cole. We're glad yeah. to have you. In addition to that, trying out BMX, he likes to bomb drop and acid drop off of crazy, yeah. insane high structures, including the Metal Militia wall ride out at Larry Lincoln's yeah. place. There's a, you can check that out on social media. So McNeil gets a 27-foot, 1-inch height, and look at that. Yeah. Cole with 30 feet 10 inches is to real. start it off. Remember, this is the first round. They get two attempts at it, so that is a great start there for Cole Denny as we get set to bring in Kamloops Canada's Elijah Aldoff, another blue collar rider. This guy works in the oil fields up in central Canada, or western Canada, I should say, in addition to being a pro rider as well. Canadians are the bravest individuals on earth. There's something about the water or the air that makes them just throw caution to the wind. And yeah, as you can tell, not for the faint of heart. Did you hear that? Well, he didn't get any of the transition. He pretty much landed at the bottom of that thing. And going back to the wind factor that we were talking about earlier, if you look at those flags, it's blowing from the back of the quarter pipe. So you've got a little bit of a, a buffer there with that scrim wall right there as you take a look at a replay. But you get that wind, it blows you in away from the lip, and that's what happens. You bottom out, and that's not good on the ankles or your back. You know, we talked about that bubble that's in the wall. That is key for suspension, because we talked about it. 
in, in the way we kind of watch, you know, BMX kind of mimic skateboarding, freestyle motocross kind of mimics BMX. And what we learn is you can't have just a regular wedge because when the suspension compresses, it just shoots you over the handlebars. So you got to kind of case on purpose, and they needed something to land on. Hence, that bubble is where that target is, and you're going to watch them try to throw that back tire as hard as they can into it and eat all of that impact. So Elijah's going to have to settle for 19 feet, 10 inches for attempt number one. Coming your way right now from Palmdale, California. This is Colby Raha. You mentioned BMX being a factor. This guy has a strong background oh, yeah. in BMX riding. And he says those skills definitely translate well into FMX quarter pipe riding. And he's another guy. Up until last year, he was working two full-time construction yeah. jobs and then got an X Games gold medal in quarter pipe. Yo! Oh, my oh. goodness gracious. I thought, I thought he was drifting a little bit from that angle, but he brings that one back in and landed in the sweet spot. Dude. This is what I'm talking about. They need to shake the racing off of freestyle motocross. Like, these dudes aren't watching Anaheim 1. You know what I'm saying? These dudes are at the skate park doing airs on quarter pipes, and that's going to show in how they ride this thing. This is the future. This is what is going to happen. This mentality of just being a walking middle finger but flying to the moon is going to speak volumes. There's going to be companies just focusing on freestyle motocross. They're going to make a motorcycle just for freestyle motocross. This is the progression that's going on, and it took a contest like this at a Nitro Circus to roll the dice and gamble to make this progression happen. Look that at, was phenomenal. Look at the body positioning that he has right there. He's got that bike leveled out, left shoulder dipping down towards the pavement, and as you brought up earlier, never loses sight of that landing spot. Colby Raw yeah. with a 36-foot, six-inch high air to start it off, and this is just round one, everybody. They yeah. got two attempts at it here yeah. in round one, and only one person's going to get eliminated this round, but we're seeing him set the bar here early on. Yeah, it is a tall bar, to say the least. Oh, here we go with another one of those Australians. Yeah, Corey Creed. The Commonwealth. Is it something in the Commonwealth that makes these guys just great art? Uh, you know, Australia's a hotbed for BMX riding and uh, for freestyle motocross yeah. riding as well. A lot of those guys coming up from the land down under. Corey was looking super, super solid on this thing in practice. Corey, uh, Colby, and Axel Hodges were the standouts for me watching these guys. They look just so comfortable on this thing, and comfort is key. Yeah, and especially to, I mean, it was available to ride last year for a small window. It hasn't been built anywhere else but right here in Utah since. So to get comfortable in such a short time really speaks to just how incredible these athletes are. And this will be a prime example of what we were talking about earlier with the approach and the style, if you will, because you'll see he just has such such a casual approach to it here. A little power wheelie. Why not? Yeah! It, 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 look, it, almost, oh. it looks like he's going to over-rotate the back end, but that's intentional. Wow. So I was told by the judges before we walked in here, they said bottom part of the handlebar is what they're going. It's not the body. It's the bottom part of the motorcycles where they're taking the measurement from. So it'd be the handlebar at the point so the, of the bar end at that point. So exactly. that you'll see that's why these guys get inverted yep. their tires up. So the lowest end Look at that of shot. the bars. That was... Tell me that's not upside down. I mean, they are just one or two upside down and hang time rotations of the head away from doing a flare. You've seen Bestwick flare that far and they're going to do alley -oop 540s and this is just Goodness. a drop of water in the bucket of what this sport is going to take off and do. So his front tire is right under the knuckle and the back tire just barely scrubs the edge of that thing. But watch the landing and watch but, him right away clean. Do you see what I'm talking about? Where it has to impact so that once the compression of the suspension takes, they don't get the anti-pop. It doesn't shoot him over to flat. All right, so Corey checks in. 34 feet, 8 inches right there. That'll put him in the number two spot as we get set to take our first look here at Axel Hodges. Hold on to my seat real quick. Your current <laughs> X Games gold medalist in quarter pipe. He missed out last year, injured himself practicing during step up practice. Had to step out, if you will, of the quarter pipe competition there with a broken wrist. No Walks away with a gold medal this year. Let's see what he can get done here at Nitro World Games in his first attempt. Oh! Just, oh! <laughs> All right. Now, he bottomed out quite a bit. Not typical of what we saw out of no. Axel. All no, week long. Absolutely not. That was probably the worst air he's done all week. But he still got in the 30-foot range, I guarantee hey, it. Hey, you're not getting graded on style points here. It could be ugly as you want as yeah. long as you go higher. Actually, you don't even have to go higher than anybody else. Oh. You just have to go higher than five other guys. Man, just landing like a or, sack of potatoes, man. You only have to go higher than one other guy because it's one elimination. Watch this impact. Oh, that angle gives it's you. It's raining freestyle motocross <laughs> riders right now. That is what it looks like. 38 feet. 
38 feet, um, arguably his worst attempt I've seen him do today. No one's ridden a wow. motocross motor quarter pipe more than him. Right. Talking about that compression right there, you can see the suspension on the back end, and that'll hurt your lower lumbar just watching that right yep. there. But as I said, only one rider eliminated in this opening round, so you just have to be better than one guy. Wow. And look at that, Axel with 38 foot one inch, so that'll put him in the top spot for now. So that puts a uh, Canadian rider <laughs> Elijah Adam in a, a tough position right there. But again, it's two runs this uh, opening round here. Two runs each round as we flow through this competition here. So again, after we get through round number two for all, or run number two for all of these guys, the top four will move on to that second round. We'll have an LCQ, for lack of a better term there. I believe we're there now. I believe we're running LCQ with Jared taking the runoff of the final two. So those first four, I believe, went. Well, Jared's you don't have to take your second run. If you don't want to, you don't have to take your second run. Yeah, Jared. No, Jared. Oh, oh my goodness. Jared gets a little under-rotated, slides out. He got a massive concussion cool. in this event two years ago at the X Games. He had an amazing X Games. A concussion and a dislocated yeah. hip. Yeah, it was one of the gnarliest crashes. So he has every right to be cautious on this ramp. He's he is a, a straight jumping fanatic, but this is new to everybody. And Jared's not scared to roll the dice, but that's about as cleanly as you're going to get away. We call that the transition, the bendy part. And you want to catch as much of that transition as you can when you're falling like that. So just to recap, where we're at thus far, everybody else has said, hey, we're happy with our first height attempts. We're good. They don't want to take their second run. So now we've moved on into the LCQ portion of things here. So Jared McNeil and Elijah Edoff there going to get a runoff to try to get that last spot. See that big scar on his arm under the Metal Militia tattoo? That was from here. This man is battered. This man is bruised. This man well, is maybe hurt. not. Maybe we're not to the LCQ yet, because Cole Denny's going to take attempt number two here. So, yeah, not 100 percent sure, but we'll, again, so I'll watch this man ride a motorcycle any day. Cole's got it. So he's in there. Yep. He's got the fourth best height thus far. He's up there in the 30 foot range. Going back to what I said earlier, he looked really tentative and really sporting the metal militia tattoo right there. That looks right infected. <laughs> we might we get a little medical. bit of road rash from sliding out of <laughs> We get medical over there. I mean, you get carpet tacked out of there, <laughs> astroturf tacked down on this thing. It's 32 feet tall of astroturf that he slid down on the other day on Friday afternoon. So going back to what we saw Axel Hodges do, currently sitting in that number one spot with 38 feet, one inch high. Oh, Wasn't well, the prettiest man. thing that we've seen him do all week long on this quarter bike. So the goal is to land kind of a little bit rear tire first, but you want to land kind of both times, both tires at the same time, so the suspension eats all the impact. Watch how he lands back tire first. He's terrified right there. Just, oh man. That's a ton of bricks. I got carpal tunnel just watching that thing. Did you? <laughs> that was unbelievable. So we are in round two hey. here. We haven't gotten to the LCQ portion of things. So both Jared and Cole here we go. deciding they're going to go here for round number two. So we are in run number two here. Run number two, round number one here. The first ever Nitro World Games FMX quarter pipe competition here. One rider per round will be eliminated until we crown our champion. Taking a look at attempt number two here for Cole Denny. Yeah, Cole! I, you know what? It's like with every jump, he just seems to get more and more comfortable. Yeah. It gets a better flow added on this thing. Yeah, this it, if, they, if they looked up nerves of steel in the dictionary, this guy has it. He is just, the bravery is, is to the moon. And, and you can see the BMX background, good taking the one foot off to kind of leverage just to get get the positioning where you want it to be. Nose dive down, as we call it. And yeah, stare at that coping that should be there and boom. Yeah, and like he was one of those guys that was deck checking that thing a little bit on the knuckle of the landing there on Friday, but he seems to have found his comfort zone. Comfort zone, 30 feet. I, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I use that term with bated breath. Comfort zone, <laughs> launching yourself five stories into the sky here at the Utah Motorsports Campus. But again, he took a good washout on Friday and got back up. So nerves of steel on that guy. My hat's off to you there, Cole. I would have been laid out on a stretcher after, after something like that. 20 feet. Even 20 feet above an already 30 foot plus existing quarter pipe. Five stories. All right, so Elijah, he's down in that bottom spot right now. If he's not able to best that 19 feet 10 inches, he will get another shot in the last chance qualifier round. Oh, just bottoms out again. 
I, Talking about him earlier being the blue collar guy working in the oil fields. He also drove down here from Canada and he's been sleeping in his truck this again, whole week. Canadians are tougher. Grit. This they're guy's tougher got grit. Than, they're tougher than everybody. Canadians should, there's something just extra special about him. And again, how do you get comfortable with this? He's just he's picking his landing, picking his spot, and just trying to land both tires, rubber side down, as we say in the industry. Find that, you know, find that piece you want to land front tire near and Again, it's all black. Normally when you've announced thousands of vert contests, Jimmy, you've been one of the prolific BMX announcers out there. There's normally a line or something to watch. And I don't know how these guys are just staring at black, but. I, that's what I was wondering about was the depth perception. I mean, you're just looking down into this infinite darkness there. Yeah. I mean, you've got the rivets there, the nails that hold that AstroTurf down. At least when the sun's shining on that, it, it has a reflection, so it gives you a little bit of depth perception. But you're just looking down at. How do you tell where the transition I don't know. is? And even in, in skateboarding and everything, right? Like there's the coping piece, there's the deck, and then there's that sticker that runs across. Well, and then you also have stains from the, you know, from the screws holding the skate light down and whatnot. But just standing there looking at this thing, you tend to get a little bit of vertigo just, just looking dead on into the transition of that thing. And we've said it a bunch of times already. This thing is a monster. Yeah. These dudes are warriors. There's no two ways about it. And this man can lead us to battle any time. Well, he has the second highest height we've seen thus far here in this opening round of competition. 36 feet, 6 inches. He is under power for attempt number two, Colby Raha. Oh, oh yes! No! And he's doing tricks. Yes. He says, oh, yeah, you want to see some big airs? I'm going to do some variations here in the quarter pipe contest, everybody. Downside can-can. Just flirting. That is so wow. fantastic. That, wow. I mean, where do you start? This is where it happens. This is what progression happens. And this is where, you know, the shows are a huge part of the industry. And, and you get comfortable and with doing, especially riding in front of people at those shows. And this is where the little hot dog comes out, right? Well, that's crazy, too, because <laughs> with the can-can there, you're changing up the position of your hips yeah. as you're coming down. And he's like, he's taking that foot off all the way up. He hasn't even reached the highest point of his style. Truck right there. Put that on the cover of a magazine. Okay. Not Come only on. does he do it, but he holds it for a second. Yeah. And if you don't get your foot across or back over the seat on that, it's lights out. Freestyle, baby. That is the essence of freestyle. Holy raw. My goodness. I love it. I, this event is living up to all the hype. Everything we wanted it to be, everything we hoped it would be. Look at that. 39 feet, 9 inches. He is the highest height thus far, and he's doing variations of that. And this is the opening round. So we're three, round one. We're three inches from the top of the height bar in round one. Oh, my God. I just want to put this all in, <laughs> in a perfect square. I'm already getting nervous. <laughs> Corey Green's going to give it an eye. Just wait. I don't, I don't know if I can maintain this for yeah. oh. a couple of rounds. We got nothing but time, player. You better sit down and drink some water. We're going to watch some guys try to touch the moon. All right, Corey no! Green. He's got 34 feet, 8 inches from his first attempt. Unbelievable. And at this point, you just have to get on into round two. Yeah. Yeah, they're fighting. Everything you'd hoped it would be. Well, these top four guys, they're all up 30 foot plus. Yeah. I mean, Kobe Raha's knocking on the door 40 feet already. I mean, they're going to go over. Let's be completely understanding. Oh, I, I agree what with it's you 210%. Be. There's no doubt in my mind that we're going to go over 40 feet. It's the bottom part of the handlebar at peak. Cool. <laughs> Did you see that landing again? Watch this. Roasting the corner. That is a beautiful shot right there, looking up into the Utah sky right there. Yeah, you see that bubble, that little piece that sticks out. You can see they land a little bit front, front tire first, and then the back tire eats all the suspension. He kind of whips the back end around, and he's coming in. He's just straight down. Yeah, like Coco Zarita on a vert ramp. Just let the back end take it. Hold you can hang on to it. Right now. All right, so Axel Hodges was in that top spot. He's now sitting in second place with 38 feet, one inches. Again, this opening round, it's all about advancing into round number two. Top four will do that. Then we'll have a last chance runoff that will go here between Jared McNeil and Elijah Adolf, and that is if Jared McNeil can take his last chance qualifier run. These rounds are going to get even gnarlier. We are just getting started. All right, so talking about the minutia, of these jumps, that he bottomed out a little bit on that, not quite as much as we saw the first go around, but not typical of what we saw out of Axel in practice all week long. That wind, look at that flag, man. Yeah. See, there's my point I made earlier, the wind is blowing oh. into the lip from the deck side. So if 
you're over that wall with the Nitro World Games banner. That oh, yeah. catches you, and it spits you away from that lip, lip, and you're not catching a lot of that transition. If the wind was going the other way, we would not be having this contest right now. There's no way. Yeah, you're getting augered in on the knuckle of that thing. But look at how look at how compressed he is right there, just making himself small right there, bringing that bike all the way around. And the compression not nearly as bad that time around. Remember that last replay we saw to him was rough. Back on it. Jerry right. McNeil, he has one of these at his house, like I said. He's got one of these at the X Games. He rode a whole bunch. And definitely took his consciousness for a minute a little bit. Well, he's got beef. Yeah, and going back to what you said about last year's X Games, that crash was gnarly. Concussion dislocated him. Have to have short-term memory loss here. Forget about all of that. So the battle will go down right now. They will both so we are not going to have an LCQ. Sport. This is beginning of round two because Elijah has elected to withdraw himself from the competition. So it's a clean slate now. We get into this next round. All the previous heights are erased from the books. We'll do this all over again with five riders this time around. Top three are going to move on. Top three are going to move on, and then four and five in the height category are going to have to do that LCQ as we take a look at our current leader, Colby Raha. This was on attempt number two. Toying. Toying with consequences. That's absolutely what's going on here. Look at how comfortable he is. That is yeah. a Jamie Bestwick style kicking. More Dennis McCoy, right? Are we going to give it that metaphor? Throwing the leg, kicking it downward. Your call. You're the BMX you rider. Can. Oh, absolutely. This is this is everything I've ever dreamed about. I, we've talked about where freestyle motocross could go. This is it. This is everything we've we've waited about. Everything we've wanted. And I mean, M Matt Hoffman invented the majority of this. We can talk about that in a minute. But oh, this is so thrilling. All right. So Elijah Adolf is out. So basically, well, how will we use these heights from round one for? It'll determine seating. How we start here in round number two. So we're gonna unleash these guys here shortly. But in the meantime, let's check back in with Todd and Lorette over at the host set. Thanks, guys. And we already have in round number one people dangling uh, little appendages off the motorcycle while going <laughs> over 35 feet high on a quarter pipe. I never thought I would see this. It's uh, And they're just going to go bigger. It is a bummer, though, that this wind is blowing because I yeah. really feel like these guys keep me going like 50 feet out of the top of this thing. I know, and we saw in practice some of these guys were going higher than 50 feet. They were going upwards of 60 feet. So there's been a lot of stuff going on, and this wind is just gusting. It's not in our favor right now. So if one of you guys can make a call to just get this wind died down and stopped, we would totally appreciate it. Um, but we checked in with you guys. We wanted to know where you are watching from. And we have Lynn that says hello from Australia, uh, from New Zealand and Canada. And right now, there is a brand new hyper bike, and this could be yours. We're going to be giving it away to one lucky fan right here on Facebook. So to win, leave a comment below and tell us what is the first trick you try on your hyper bike. We'll choose one of you and announce the winner later in the broadcast. So leave your comments below right now. You can check out the Nitro Circus Hyper bikes exclusively at walmart.com well the first trick i would do is called the gut buster surprise and that's when you slam your gut right in the middle of your handlebars all right well we are going to get moving on right here this is such an insane event nitro world games this is the quarter pipe and man oh man things are just going to get more wild from here i'm colby raha I'm currently from Temecula, and we're out here riding the Nitro World Games quarter pipe today. I don't know if anything has gone this big before. Like uh, the skateboards and snowboards BMX, they go big, but I think this one we're going higher than anything before. I don't get like jitters watching people go big or anything usually like anymore, but on this one, I feel like I'm a kid again watching the guys ride at X Games when I was like 10. So it's gonna be a heck of a show. Man.
That is just absolute insanity. Obviously, he's very comfortable on this thing as he's got multiple variations. This just part of the insanity that is the Nitro World Games. Speaking of that, if you want to check out all the excitement in person, now's your chance. The Nitro Circus, you got this tour, is coming to the U.S. and Europe. You can get your tickets now on NitroCircus.com to see Travis Pastrana and some of his wildest ideas live. And you can listen to my man Micah Kranz out there hosting yeah. some of those shows. Come see a live show. You've never seen anything like it ever before. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll get Ryan Williams autograph. It'll be a great time. Come see Bill go in person. Hey, It'll and half awesome. of those shows, we're doing some Facebook Live contests yeah. within the show out there. Yep. So you guys can check it out also on Facebook on the Nitro Circus page if you're hanging out here. Jerry's coming, in to, person. He's coming to the You Got This Tour. All right, so as I mentioned before, the heights from round one, they are erased. It's a clean slate. We do it all over again. Those heights from earlier just dictates who goes in what order. So Jared McNeil was the fifth best height there in round well, number one. So go. he has to go right first here in round number two round again. Number two, two runs. This time around, top three are advancing. And Ryder sitting in the fourth and fifth position here at the end of this round. will get a one runoff last chance qualifier to try to get into round number three. Yeah, he went down once already, did Jared McNeil. So I think he's got his cage rattled a little bit. Yeah, you can see he's not quite going as uh, to the wall as he was before. He knows it. Uh, he, He's a conscious man about his riding. Self-preservation is the name of the game when you're riding something like this. And he's had a couple of bad knocks uh, in prior quarter pipe events. So you got to wonder, after the bounce that he took earlier, like, I mean, I can't even imagine what's possibly going through his head. Think of just how long he slid over 20 feet easily on his side. And you can't stop. You can't slow down. You're locked in for that horrible car accident that that is a freestyle motocross crash. Right? Uh, maybe he's smiling. That's a good part. Yeah. He's got a smile on his face. At that point, maybe you just want to go through one and just yeah. shake the jitters off and then come back and try to send it in run number two as we get set to bring back in Cole Denny. And I, the story with him, I mean, he looked so nervous on this thing and rough on Friday. Saturday, he got a little bit better. And now he's he's in the driver's seat of this thing. I mean, he's looking strong. Oh, look how far he carved. Whoa. OK. But look at the landings for him and how much they've improved over the course of the weekend. And yeah, talking about those two different styles, carving versus straight up and down, he's definitely more of a carver on this thing as he almost went to the left side takeoff. Yeah, like you said, all of these panels are adjustable. So to go to that other wall is just insane. Like, they, from what I understand is they wanted to make it all one side, but this happened to be the safer way where they have that setback wedge. But man, did he travel far across that ramp. Well, pretty much we've seen all these guys at practice all weekend long take off from that right side. Colby can actually hit it in both directions. Yeah. He's super com comfortable taking off from the left or the right, but basically the main consensus was everybody was going to go from that right-hand side right there. The panel's being adjustable in there. They all get together after practice every day, talk to the sports and calm guys and make any changes if needed. As we unleash Corey Creed. Once the Australians get their fangs into anything, <laughs> they seem to find a way to just... So style and comfort, those have been the names of the game for him out here this weekend. He's just looked super casual on this. It just gets inverted again, and he tended to drift a little bit, a little bit more of a carving style here in round two than what we saw to him in round number one. Yeah, I mean, definitely. We can kind of take the aspects of, of the big air guys in BMX, and, and you see how they get so stiff at the bottom. They, they say they lock out their arms and legs as they go up, and then it's the force that pops them back, where, where they're kind of you know doing the tabletops and sort of doing the whips. But as soon as they spot that landing, as soon as those tires go down, you see them throw that back tire as hard as they can into the quarter pipe. Man, that must be just such a violent impact right there. And yeah, just all the arm strength to hold him up. Because you'll choke yourself out with those handlebars. Just absorbs the shock right there in the forearms. He's got 36 feet, 8 inches right there. Taking a look at Cole Denny. He's at, he's at 30 foot, 8 inches. Yeah. Jared McNeil sitting there in third right now with 16 feet, 4 inches. I'm going to predict. Brings up Axel Hodges he's gonna here. going to go over the height pole right here. My prediction. Here we go. So the better of the three landings that we've seen him take out here yeah. this afternoon. And again, here in round number two, you just have to be one of the top three to move on and avoid that last chance qualifier round. 
just falling down again, man. His, his practice runs to these contest attempts are night and day different. He came out and landed buttery smooth before. Now you can tell he's just forcing. I don't know if it's the wind or if he's just not getting the takeoff he likes, but he is upper body just making it. Well, you know, it, the wind definitely in the factor out Listen. here. Ah, that doesn't feel nice. No way. Not just possible. a heavy impact right there. Coming in back tire first, where we saw him put both tires down at the same time in practice. But I would have to say it's the wind for sure. I mean, those flags are howling when they show those deck shots. Those flags are screaming into the lip from the deck side. Colby Raha coming around for his first attempt of two here in round number two, Nitro World Games FMX quarter pipe final. What's crazy is there's really no strategy to this because no one's ever competed at this ever before. Go high right yeah. away. I'm going to try to touch the moon every time. Yo! Oh, my goodness. And look at the, the stall out. And he gets a great landing out of that. But he just hangs there at the apex of that air. Yeah, and just drops his head, drops his shoulder. And you have to trust that gravity is going to be there for you every single time. And oh, it's there. It is it to. working out in your favor, yeah. though? It's not going anywhere. I mean, if, if, smooth is fast, right? So if you start fighting it, that's when you know things are going wrong. So you have to have the wherewithal to just be calm in this, your moment of zen. <laughs> See, he got small right there, and he tucks into that, brings that around. Yeah, and then what is it, the free fall? The free fall back down to earth? While you're holding on to a oh, just 500cc motorcycle. Almost like a BMX invert right there, the way he tucks into that. So 39 feet flat for Colby Raha here on his first attempt of round number two. Again, they get two shots at it here. They don't have to take their second run if they feel comfortable. So Jared McNeil is saying he is going to dip out of this one. Oh, sweet, wind meter. Got the wind meter up there. <laughs> a, a brisk 22 to 26 degree, or uh, speed 30 <laughs> to 38. Did you see a 38 at the end there? Rest in peace, Tyler, one punch. There you go. Yeah. Paul Denny, he had 30 feet, eight inches there, his first go around. What does he bring to the party this time around? You know he's bringing something fun to the party. If you have a party, invite this man, at Cole from SD. Find him on Instagram. He'd appreciate it. Here we go. Oh, get it, get it, get it. Man, it's when the scariest thing that could possibly happen is you over whip. So I'm, when I'm watching this, I'm looking at the back tire to make sure if it goes past 90, it stays within the 15 degree mark. If it goes the opposite way, you are getting whipped, high sided in the worst possible way. So it can't go any further than right there. But as you can see, his hips started going. And if you get a little too high and you took pump a little too much, you are in for a nightmare scenario. Look at Brings that one around, and for him, I'm going to say that's his best landing that we've seen out of him here in these two rounds. Actually, probably out of the weekend from what I saw out of practice. Yeah. 34, 34 feet, that's 7 high. inches. He's, if the learning curve for him is insane with how much better he gets at this. Yeah. Axel Hodges sitting in that number two spot here with 38 feet, 6 inches, just a half a foot behind Colby Raha as of right now. But uh, again, with Jared McNeil withdrawing, as we've been told, all of these guys are going to advance into round number three. Did he get over the... Oh. There we go. That was the landings that we saw at Axel Hodges in practice all week long. Yeah, just another day at work, it looked like for him. Every time he hit this thing, it was casual, it was concise. Again, look at the panel drift. We talk panels, which are the, kind of the sheets of carpet, right? And you can see there's three of them out there, and they're landing on the one closest to the side. Oh, look at this angle. The drone shot right there hovering over the lip. It, it looks like they're just a head turn away from doing a flip twist. I, look, right? From, if they just kept going. From that side angle that we saw, it the, looks like a BMX vert invert. This Does is a not? drop in the bucket of what this event will produce in the future. These guys are the absolute warrior pioneers of it. Well, you've already they are seen, just showing what's available. You've already seen Colby do a can-can. Yeah. And then in that feature that we saw, he did a knack tack on when they had this thing set up out in Temecula. Did you see Colby ride his four-wheeler on it or his three-wheeler on it? I, I have not <laughs> seen that. I'll they, have to go scour social media after this. They had to, to kick him off. They had to kick him off the ramp twice. <laughs> I love it. So again, with Jared McNeil withdrawing from this, only one rider gets eliminated per round. So all four of these guys left will advance in that round number three. So Raha, Hodges, Creed, Denny, all will be moving on into that round number three. So far, out of two rounds, it's 
this gentleman right here, Kobe Rajo, who's been the high mark to beat, topping out almost near 40 feet, Micah. I just, I love where motocross is going because they're taking that helicopter shot in super slow-mo and now they're going as high as the helicopter, right? They're taking something that's never been done and just exploiting it for all it's absolutely worth. And the style that these guys, like you can't learn this style, either you have it or you don't. And these guys are absolutely shredding. So it looks like that is going to do it here for round number two, since these guys will all advance with Jared McNeil withdrawing. Before we get to round three, we'll send it back over to Todd Lorette once again. Thank you, setting up for round number three. This is continuing to be an exciting event here. It's just, like I said it before, it is a bummer that this wind is blowing. I mean, yeah. these guys definitely have are feeling it when they get up into the air. As soon as they clear that like 25 foot mark, then you're in the breeze. You're kind of blocked by it. You get in the breeze up there. Things get a little bit hectic, but I'm sure these guys are going to push through. Those bikes have enough weight to them that they can carry them and put them in the sweet spot. Yeah, for sure. And you saw that wind meter up at the top blowing 22 to 30 miles an hour of gust of wind. This is wild weather out here. So these guys need to keep that really clean headspace, clear headspace, and that is what they're doing. So one of my questions for you guys is how high will the winner go in FMX quarter pipe? We want to hear from you. Tune in. We want to have your voice in the broadcast. So how high will the winner of FMX quarter pipe go? And guys, if you want to check out all of the excitement in person, now is your chance. Nitro Circus, you've got this. Arena Tour is coming to the US, Europe, and Australia. It's all of Travis Pastrana's craziest ideas rolled up into one action-packed show. Get your tickets now at nitrocircus.com. And speaking of one of the Travis's craziest ideas, I get a real kick out of the fact that this whole thing was uh, constructed on a napkin. Yes, absolutely. May or may not have involved a few beers. <laughs> but here we are now. Nitro World Games setting up for round number three. Boys, these guys are going to send it in round three. Well, they need to because this is for podium here in this round. Why? The top two heights are going to move on in to round four, which is for first place. The bottom two heights at the end of this one are going to get an LCQ, and the higher height of that is going to be the third place finisher out here. So we will see one of these guys battling it out, two of these guys, I should say, battling it out for podium contention here in this round as we started off with Cole Denny. Yeah! Yes. Oh, and he's getting in the mix with some variations with that downside one-footer. Feeling comfortable out here today. Yo, true freestyling. This is what real freestyle is about. You're going to get in the air. You're comfortable. Take that foot off. One-footed table. Perfect cursive. Look at that. Yeah, there you go. Kick it a little bit. Show people you know where you're at. Right there at the peak of the jump. I'm going to do some variations, yeah. too. I mean, Colby spent a lot of time together riding. Oh, it's almost stuttered it a little bit, stutter stepped it a little bit, like, eh, eh why not? Even better, even better. <laughs> he thought about it, then decided, I'm sending this, and then gave it the extension. Way to go, Cole. He pushed I his arms flat. I, saw I like your style. All right, Corey Creed again. The heights from previous rounds, it's a clean slate. Those are erased. We start all over again with a clean slate when we start a new round. So Cole in with 33 feet as we take a look at Corey Creed here. Nerves of steel. This one. Oh no! That, that over rotation is yep. his style. He's lucky he's a big man. I he thought brought the that same thing, thing when I watched him in practice. I'm like, oh no, oh no! But then I realized, oh, that's just how you do it. Yeah. You like to scare people. He he's has in a, control. He has a way of sucking that back end where he wants it to be. See, so drops the hip, drops the shoulder, putting the head with a flatty. We call that a euro table. And then at the last minute, he pins it, which just kind of sucks the bike back underneath him. It's one of the greater styles you'll ever see in this. That is beautiful. It's a wild angle right there, looking up into the Utah sky there. Look, again, that handlebar, that bottom handlebar right there is the highest he was. So as long as the lowest point of the bike, and that's why that style is important, by taking that head, looking down and spotting that spot. So in the elimination round competition out here. So Corey is going to get another run. We had uh, a bit of a technical issue there with the height meter, so he's going to have to re-rack and take run number one again. Just a bit of a bummer, however. This guy's been calm, cool, and collected in practice out here all weekend long. He's been looking good in round one and round two. That was epic. He's just He's in cruise control mode right now, so he'll just send it again. Yeah, the Gold Coast produces super athletes. So many of them all ride together, all ride in different disciplines, all pushing the progression. Let's see it. Height meter fixed. Yes, please. 
So it's it's a mirror image of what we saw. That first attempt it almost lands in the same spot every single time there. Yeah, it's great at this takeoff. You see this handful of throttle. There's the table. Now he turns the bars down, sucks it back in, and perfect. Absolutely picture perfect landing. And you look at it and you think, oh, this has to be easy. Absolutely not. There is nothing that is going to prepare you for going. Look, is it your feet, you're over the handlebars. So you're basically putting your chin out for a Mike Tyson uppercut if you don't do this absolutely perfect. The consequences are dire. These guys just toying with it. You know, and going back to a point that we made earlier, it's not like these things are all over the place and you can just go out and readily practice. These things were set up, or this one was set up, I should say, earlier in the year. It's a that these guys got to ride it for a little while. Some of these guys coming off of a competition on a similar ramp at the X Games back in July, but this one taller, wider, as you heard Jared McNeil mention in that feature earlier, this thing is daunting. Yeah, Axel was lucky. He was doing a bunch of shows at the Calgary Stampede with Keith Sayers and family, and they built one of these quarter pipes for a show, so he got a little extra time than everybody else and walked away with some pretty big medals because of it, and that's a great example! Oh, is he wow. comfortable on that ramp? That's crazy to me that they built one of these for shows at yeah. the Calgary Stampede. Yeah. That blows my mind. Yeah. For, I'm telling you, everything kind of goes from the grassroots, right? And it's the show teams that are kind of pushing the sports, and then they progress these great riders that no one's ever heard of. You keep calling them blue collar, and I, I call them my friends. These are the dudes I grew up with and, you know, worked hard with, and it's awesome to see them persevere and do great things like this. Oh, and I call them that. I'm not putting them down. I think it's not like they don't do this all the time. It's not like yeah. this is just their only job. These guys have to go out, put in a nine to five. And I'm going back to what I saw about Colby earlier. That guy had two construction jobs. He yeah. came into X Games last year and a couple of hairline fractures and vertebrae in his lower back. He came out with a gold medal. Is there event. anything more dangerous than a hungry freestyle motocross rider? Well, it worked out because he got a gold medal. He picked up some sponsors. Yeah. He got to ditch the construction jobs. Beautiful. And here he is at Nitro World Games. He got a silver medal in big air or quarter pipe higher at the uh, X Games this year, by yeah. the way. So he's two for two on podium appearances at quarter pipe there at the X Games. And he's been dominant here in the first two rounds at Nitro World Games. Here we go to the moon. Oh, unbelievable. It, it, it never gets comfortable. Not one part of me doesn't tense up the minute you hear him grab third gear and just pin it. Yeah, I have to take a breath every time they go on the run in there. Lovely angle. Look at that. So Axel had a 38-foot, 10-inch air right there. You got Corey Creed sitting in second with 38 feet, 2 inches as we await the height to pop up on our monitor here for Mr. Raha out of Palmdale, California. So we have a 32-ish foot ramp. We're doing 40-ish foot airs. The world's lowest base jump is about 100 <laughs> feet, Jimmy. We could put, we could potentially put parachutes on these dudes and just have them pull rip cords at the top. So he's back into the 39 foot plus range. It's 39 feet, one inch there for Colby Raw. So here we go into attempt number two for these guys. This is round number three. Remember the top two heights after two runs, move on to battle it out for first place. The bottom two guys here after two runs, they're each gonna get one more to duke it out for third place. Taking another look at Cole Denny here. Yes, incredible. Incredible. I think you have the first skill, right? He's got 33 feet. That's got him sitting in fourth place as of right now. Dude, the style is everything. The fashion, the style, the Instagram, everything is a perfect package with this young man. It is perfect for what 2018 needs in the clean cut style of action sports. This man is blazing his own trail. And, uh, Go Google that guy and check out the video of him acid dropping off the yeah. metal militia wall out of Larry's place. And Colby is wall riding through. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, he had to make a landing at the bottom of the wall ride because it was just dropping to desert, basically. Somebody was getting water delivered and he built a ramp and flipped onto the water truck. <laughs> that man is excited. He is a social media sensation yeah. and I am a fan. Axel Hodges currently sitting in a transfer spot as of right now. That's key. He's got 38 feet, 10 inches. However, Corey Creed's knocking on the door as well. He's up there in the 38 foot plus range. Yep. Remember, top two move on to duke it out for first place. Someone's going over 40. I can tell. I, I, I have a feeling they're saving it for the last round. They're just trying to get to it. And uh, it's time to really let go of that throttle. We're going to see guys up in stratospheres. We should clear it with the F FCA, what is it? FAA. <laughs> That's it. There you go. There it is. There's an airport in the area. With, Somewhere. Yeah, it's right. Imagine flying into Salt Lake City and seeing this amazing event happening in the middle of the desert. Just looking at the approach. Yeah. <laughs> 
What is going on down there? Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. If you look out the left side of the plane, you will see radness. Yeah, Travis Pastrana jumping 100 feet. Beautiful. All right, so the wind seems to have died down just a little bit. It seems to be cooperating with us at this point. Axel Hodges getting locked and loaded here to take attempt number two. You just and hope the wind doesn't shift. That's what the problem has been this weekend. It's been serious wind and then it shifts last minute. There's no predicting it. Every app has the wrong information. Either you live it or you don't. So. All right, 38 feet, 10 inches for him on attempt number one and sending oh. it into the sky and torquing that one around. Man, the timing is everything. You see him at the peak of that air, pin it with the, pin it with the acceleration, and then throw his arms down. If you do that too late or too early, you're on the highlight reel you don't want to be on. Masterful. How inverted he is. That landing again. We call that the tomahawk, right? Where you're just coming down and just ba-boom. Yep. All sorts of effort into that front suspension. It's just the chops. Sending that front tire into the last bit of transition there. Yep, you see his head over his shoulder, looking where he wants that front tire to go. Picture perfect. Taking one more look at it right there. And oh! Yep. Look at where he tops out right there. We talked about it. I'm waiting to see it. What's the height going to be? Yep. We now I'm waiting to see it pop up on the graphics. And we oh! are in the 40 foot range. Axel what? Hodges tops out at 40 feet flat. Yeah, look at Kenny Bell going in there and getting the information right away. We didn't build a height pole tall enough. What an awesome problem to have. <laughs> That's why we have the electronic portion of that. Yeah. We can get past the 40. That's fantastic. Might be some sort of local building code. Couldn't go that high. You never <laughs> know. However, we have the electronics to monitor this when they go higher than 40 feet. Axel Hodges sets it at 40 feet flat. Yeah, that was. I, we knew they were going up there. We knew they had the ability. They just needed the wind at the right spot. They just needed the best reason to do it. 40 feet is achievable. So we're officially 70 feet above concrete. See Jared McNeil coming up, giving him the knuckles right there. So Axel and Colby are going to move on into the battle for first place. So that means Corey Creed Cole and Cole Denny are going to have to duke it out. They're each going to get one more jump apiece, one more attempt. And this is for the right to stand on the podium out here. This is all for the marbles for third place. Do it for Lemmy. Oh, yeah. look how high it went. Yes. Arguably his highest attempt yep. of the day. Yep. That Possibly, was, looking that at that great. vantage point. No, it definitely looked like that was the most throttle. He's given it up that thing and all day. And another great landing for him. Yeah, I mean, he's just getting better and better. And as we can say, drop in the bucket of what this is going to produce. Oh, the foot came off again. Beautiful I didn't see style. that real-time speed. And again, right where you want to land. You just want to split that kind of bubble. That is awesome. Just staring, staring, staring. Getting comfortable. There's the tabletop, taking a little downside one-footed table. Yeah, for the ladies out there. <laughs> Dropping in front wheel first, dropping on that bubble. So we know we're going to see the battle between Colby Rahad and Axel Hodges in the final round for the top spot. The question is, who is going to get third place out here as we await the height? 34 feet, 8 inches there for Cole Denny. It comes down to Corey Creed again. It's the knockout round here. The last chance. It's one and done. If Corey Creed is able to go higher than 34 feet, 8 inches, he will stand on the podium out here today. Yep. It's the battle for third place here between Corey Creed and Cole Denny. Those Australians love medals. Here we go. To the lip. Yeah. What are you saying? What's He's your expert, now, yeah. expert opinion? I, I, it's hard to tell. I think he went over. I think he was at the 36, I, I 38 mark. I think he did too, but I just, I still get all, I get nervous watching these guys go into the run-in right there. How about watching a guy in a denim jacket go 70 feet above I the ground? I was say, I, props to you, Cole Denny, for your wardrobe choice. It was gnarly. Did you see the slick track actually going on in the back? Yeah, right this the is a great, if you've never been to this sports area, it, it, Utah Sports Campus is one of the more exciting places I've been in my life. This place is awesome. Well, we are in the state of sport. Utah yeah. is the state of sport. Did you know that? Yeah, motor just the beehive state. I forget motor sports count. And, it's awesome. Yeah, if you're ever out in Salt Lake City, just make the short 40-minute drive out to the west side and come check out the Utah Motorsports Campus. So, 38 feet 6 inches for yeah. the man from 
Gold Coast Australia, Corey Creed is gonna stand on the podium out here today. Yeah. With Colby Raha and Axel Hodges, the question is, which one of those guys is gonna stand on the highest part of that podium? We will we'll find out when we get to that fourth and final round, but before we get to it one more time, we're gonna send it back over to Todd Loren. Tell you what, I'm pretty stoked on the whole Hesh versus Fresh thing going down out there <laughs> on the quarter pipe. We have our final set. Will we see a air over 40 feet? Well, we're gonna sit here and find out here. We're gonna go absolutely massive. I'm certainly sure, I mean, 40 feet high out of this quarter pipe. Keep going, keep pushing, boys. All right, well, Lorette, you've got something to give away, huh? Yeah, so we were talking about the hyperbike, and we wanted to find out what trick would you guys do if you won this hyperbike. So our winner, we have Joshua D. Main Warrior. He said, my first move on the hyperbike would be a face plant. Nailed one of those about 10 years ago this that broke honest. my shoulder. So Joshua D. Main Warring, you are the winner of the Nitro Circus bike that is an amazing prize congratulations we will get in contact with you on how we can get you the bike all right well stick around here a lot more to go boys let's take this thing home these clouds are getting gray things are getting evil looking out here it's definitely an ominous looking sky out there and i have to give you props todd for the hash versus fresh yeah. that needs to be a new hashtag out here mike and i were cracking up when you said that and then again cole denny check him out on social media love the style but here we go two Runs a piece for these gents here. No LCQ, this is it. You get the highest height, you get the top nod. You get to walk out of here with the first place trophy here at the first ever quarter pipe competition, FMX quarter pipe competition, I should say, at the Nitro World Games. Yep. Colby Raha and Axel Hodges duking it out for top honors out here. Now since Axel topped out at 40 foot, Colby is going to have to go first here. This go around, two attempts. And it's real simple. You get the top height, you get the win. You don't, you get second place, and you stand up there next to Corey Creed. Yeah, simple rules, simple moves. Oh, my goodness. Taking a handoff. We've already seen a can-can out of him. Now he's doing one-handers at that height. So lazy, so perfect. He looked over the bar to me. By my naive eye, I think he went over 40 feet easily. I like it when you walk that plank. I know. I, I, I'm going to take chances. You're a gambling man. I only get one chance on a microphone. I'm going to take him all over, right? Wow. Way over. He's pointing down to show you where he wanted to land, right about there. Epic backdrop right there with the mountains in the background. That's Beautiful. Awesome, but a great first attempt right there. Now again, for those of you just tuning in, you don't get scored on this, it's just about the height. So if you do variations, it's awesome to look at, but there are no yes! extra points. Yes! Oh my goodness. He's we just showing you, I can do the height and I can do tricks at that height. 41 feet, five inches for Colby Raw. On. Real. And just to say this, I wasn't downplaying the trick. I'm just letting you know that it's all about height. There's no scores yeah. involved in it. I was just telling you the semantics of how this works. I'm a fan. Yes. You keep doing tricks with those yes. heights, Kobe Raha. Yes, yes. What did, what did Todd Richards say? Taking flanges <laughs> off, I believe is how he described it. Taking appendages. Appendages off, that was it. Perfect. It's going to get bananas. I don't know how much. Do you go to fourth gear? Do you go to fifth gear? Do you see what the limits are? Yes. Why not? Yes. Send it. It's you nitro game. Do it. Axel yes, Hodges you do. in for his first of two and sends oh. it first that one. Levels it out, brings oh. it back in and just taking the express elevator to the bottom right there. That was his worst landing of Holy the day. Holy lumbar pain. Did you see how low he landed and on again, that? Like, there's no airbag here. There is no safety. There is no resi. There is nothing. There is consequences and consequences. Look how far he pulled out. That wind didn't help pushing him out any further. Straight to the bottom. Oh, if he, you caught, imagine, he caught more of that transition than I thought, taking a look at that second replay. What? But did the, you hear the thud? The tomahawk, we call it, where you hit back tire first. That's the quickest way to put your neck into your handlebars. Then you even want to talk, and he beat it. Oh, by two by inches. two inches. 41 feet, seven inches. The battle is on, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. And we're not done yet. They're each going to get one more go at it here. So it's a F game of inches here at FMX Quarter Pipe Final at Nitro World Games. Every run is a world's first. Every run is a world's record. No one's been this high on a motorcycle up and down ever, period. Well, it period. comes down to this. If Colby is not able to get to 41 feet, eight inches, Axel will not have to take that second run. So this could essentially be the final hit of the inaugural Nitro World Games FMX quarter pipe competition. And here we go, can Colby Raha get it done? Get it. Go! Oh, my goodness. 
you see how long he was sideways at the peak? Just holding it as he's leveled out right there. And I mean, whether he gets it or not, what a day that guy has had on this quarter pipe. This looks just like Big Air in other competitions. Just like Big Air quarter pipe, where they just lazily sit in that position, and then as they free fall, they're adjusting to the landing. It's all about going as high as you can here. Now look how he just sits sideways. He needs to see where that bike's gonna land. I can't believe he put that back under him. Oh my goodness. 45 feet, two inches. Way it's not over. over. It Way over the height pole. Comes down to this one more run. Axel Hodges is going to have to go again. So we're at 75 feet above the ground. Remember that number I said about base jumping? I wasn't yeah. told there'd be math. 100 I'm feet. Kidding. So we're two stories away from these guys just having parachutes. He needed 41 feet. Eight inches, he got 45 feet too. So now Axel Hodges is going to have to try to counter back. It is a chess match on dirt bikes taking place out here today. And Colby Raja has just said, checkmate. I am in awe. I don't even have the words, and I'm going to try to make some up. Unbelievable what this contest is coming to. So he needs 45 feet, 3 inches to stand the highest spot on the podium. And this will be the final hit right here. He gets inverted. I don't think so. I don't think he got it. I think this one's going to go to Colby Raja. What do you think? Something happened between practice and the competition for Axel. He did his best, and he went above 40, and I'm not taking anything away from no, how he No, not wrote, at all. I'm picking up what you're putting down. The way what he you're practiced on this ramp, he was looking at 50 feet. He was looking at going higher than everybody else. It could be the wind. It could be moisture. It could be more elevation. It could be anything. But I'm telling you, man, 41 feet is nothing to be sad about. What an incredible feet, run. 11 inches. I mean, these guys both topped out over 40 feet. And I, I would have to say it was the win. Based on what we saw out of him on these landings and how he bottomed out and was landing back tire first, opposed to what we saw on Friday and Saturday out of him in practice. And again, we're not downplaying his performance no. out here at all, but he just he looked different in practice the last two days. Absolutely. You can see him talking about it. These two men put on an absolute warrior warrior run. So Axel is going to get one more chance. So I stand corrected. I said there was no LCQ earlier. Oh, this so is Axel, the Axel, Sun Death. Is Sun Death. High School Sun Axel Death. is going to get one more shot at it here. There's no 40, tying. 45 feet, 2 inches. There's no tying here at the Nitro World Games. We are our winners. Awarding the winners. We get to see one more shot at it here. We didn't get to see these two battle out at the X Games in 2017. They battled it out in 2018 back in July. Colby got the gold in 2017 in X Games. Axel takes the gold this year in X Games, and Colby got the silver. Right now, Colby's sitting in the driver's seat and looking to pay it back and take the win here at Nitro World Games. But Axel's going to get one more attempt, and here we go, Micah. Get it? Get it? She stalls that one out. Oh, man. Thoughts? Did it be enough? No, absolutely not. Again, you can see in the landing, because you. As a takeoff, you go to the peak, and then as you go down, it's how hard you impact kind of dictates how high you really went. I mean, he's oh my a little bit over. Watch his knees and arms. Kaplunk. Every ounce of that man has an incredible core strength to be able to even hold on. I've, I've watched shoulders and collarbones break just from landing that flat in motocross before. I can't believe he's all in one piece falling just doing that. Look at where he dips down that left shoulder and gets inverted, and he's still sailing upwards. At that point, yeah, he looked over 40, yeah, absolutely. For, well, yeah, at this point in time, we're at the 40-foot plus club for sure. Yeah. You need 45 feet, three inches to best, and he's going, it's his highest one of the day, 42 yeah. feet, to, or excuse me. Yep. Yep, 42 feet, 10 inches. He had 41-11 the last go around, so that is the highest one of the day for him. And it's going to go to Colby Raja out here. That is Had awesome. Had to settle for a silver medal in quarter pipe at the X Games, and he walks out of here with the win at Nitro World Games. Uh, more than deserving. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, I watched him go to the skate park. Like, it's, it's awesome and incredible to watch these guys that are true freestylers take a hold of the sport, take a hold of the progression, do it their way. And uh, Colby's a great example of that. That's going right back to Southern California. How about Corey Creed, though, walking out of here in third place? And I, I got to give hats off to Cole Denny. What a performance he put on out here. He didn't make the pony, but I got to say, that guy's learning curve was impressive out here, watching him ride this thing on Friday to what we saw to him today. Yeah, he's on every Instagram account that has to do with freestyle motocross on the planet right now. He came out wearing a motorhead jacket, 
throwing caution to the winds and letting people know that Southern California freestyle motocross is uh, alive and well. The militia is still strong down in that area. So Colby Raha putting in work out here at the Utah Motorsports Campus, and it paid off in the inaugural FMX quarter pipe competition here at the Nitro World Games 2018. It was just so dominant in those first two rounds and then had to settle for riding first coming into this fourth and final round, but then blast it to 45 feet, two inches, Micah. Again, the bottom of the handlebar is what we measured from, meaning the top of him, realistically, parts of him were in the 48, 49 foot range, right? For sure. Unbelievable riding, about as good as you're gonna land that. Again, with all the variables against him, right? The wind didn't like him, the elevation doesn't like him, and he just blasts that motorcycle. Look, eye on the prize. I wish we could get a view of his face, because I guarantee you just see eyeballs inside of those goggles right now. Puts the back tire down first. I don't know, man. It's all business with that dude. He's got the eye of the tiger. Yeah. He, and, and he looked so comfortable out there. Both he and Axel didn't look to be too bothered by that win, but Colby definitely looked super comfortable out here throughout this entire competition, and it nets him a big win out here at Nitro World Games. Yep, and now the whole freestyle community is now studying. They're now slow mowing. They're getting ready for the next year. That's what's awesome about these games. Out of nowhere, right? You even said it. The, the young man, Corey Creed, came out of nowhere and just destroyed this event. Let me tell you how many quarter pipes there are in Australia. None. None. There's none. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, man. What a finish here for quarter pipe. Let's check in with Lorette, who is going to be down on the floor with our winner. Lorette. seven stories this guy's crazy too so uh we love having this event here we've had it for three years now and adding this crazy thing has been wonderful so congratulations well jeff robbins will you please pick up that first place trophy and ladies and gentlemen i am honored to ask jeff robbins to please Give it to our champion, the champion of Nitro World Games FMX Quarter Pike Competition, setting a new world record of a height of 45 feet 2 inches, is Colby Raha! If you want to jump down here for just a second, let's have a conversation. Man, that wind was gusting, and I got a chance to talk to you earlier. Yesterday, you said this this wind would mean everything. Can you believe this moment right now? Yeah, I actually like the wind. I grew up in the high desert, but uh, yeah, I just won the Nitro World Games quarter pipe. I'm so stoked. This is uh, it's everything we work for. This is huge, man. It's really competitive. Everybody rode really good. Axel was going huge. Creed, Cole, all the dudes are riding good. I'm just stoked. When you knew that moment was right there, you had to dig in. How far did you push yourself today? I had to hit the old send a button on that last one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we got the job done, man. It was, uh, it was cool. All right. Colby Raha, congratulations. Thank you to Travis Pastrana for throwing the sickest contest on the new quarter pipe, letting everybody ride it and getting to this level. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Colby Raha is your champion. Jimmy Coleman, what are your thoughts? Woo, what a, uh, what a battle that was right there between uh, Colby and Axel, but he just, he looked to be in the driver's seat out here and not bothered by that wind whatsoever, Micah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We watched an absolute war out there that was a war against the quarter pipe and against each other it couldn't have come out any better i think it was absolutely fair in all the drama everything you wanted like once next year when can we do it again 
We'll have to wait a year to do it, but taking a look at some replays right here, it was a gnarly, gnarly finish out here for the first ever quarter pipe contest here at the Nitro World Games in 2018. But it's not done yet. You guys can go check out the tour. Don't forget the Nitro Circus. You got this tour coming to the US and Europe. Get your tickets at nitrocircus.com. That's a wrap on behalf of myself, Micah Kranz, Lorette Nickel, and Todd Richards. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys on the You Got This Tour.